phase for fertility sparing treatment for endometrial carcinoma. I hope I can address this in the time. Okay. Uh, I have no conflict of interest and uh, I'm gonna address this uh, very rapidly so I would finish in shorter than the expected time. Uh, background, is endometrial carcinoma as all know is a disease of postmenopausal women. It's an early symptomatizing disease of a relatively good prognosis if it is discovered in stage one. The majority of cases <coughs> occur in postmenopausal, so there is no space for fertility sparing. About a quarter of these patients occur in premenopausal women, but less than 5% of women with endometrial carcinoma present below 40 years and some of these women may request a fertility sparing. So that's relatively, uh, is not as the cervical cancer which occurs in the young women and many women are uh, requesting fertility sparing, but you will end up in 5%. But taking into consideration now that endometrial carcinoma is more commonly seen both in developed and underdeveloped nations, and it is more commonly seen in young women. So you may be lucky to encounter one or more patients during their lifetime with endometrial carcinoma who request fertility sparing surgery. I remind that the standard treatment of care is total hysterectomy, whatever abdominal, vaginal, laparoscopic, the debate is not so good <laughs> for the endometrium, but it does work good for the laparoscopic hysterectomy, uh, bilateral serpingotherectomy, lymphic pelvic lymphadenectomy, plus or minus uh, uh, other <laughs> advanced technology if it's needed. Uh, endometrial carcinoma in young women tends to be early stage and also tends to be low grade. So it is expected that the prognosis would be good. In this minority of women, less than 5% who request fertility sparing, this should be attempted whenever requested. Important to select the patients or patient selection. The ideal candidates should be very young women who are under 40 with grade one endometrioid early stage, early grade. So this in the old good days was the low grade, early stage endometrial adenocarcinoma of the endometrial subtype. However, over the years, especially in the South Korean experience, they have tried in the intermediate and even in the high risk group, and as I'm gonna speak in these references. And I don't uh, know why they done that, but perhaps in South Korea, they get married uh, at an advanced age and they have to manage because most of the recent literature re references about that come from South Korea. So in this study of Park et al, the objective was to estimate the oncologic and pregnancy outcomes after all are progestin. In stage one, A, grade one, that is the low stage by all classification, but also have stage one, grade one and two, and stage one B with good grade. So it's a mixture between low grade and intermediate grade. Uh, is that sufficient? I think the first lecture of this conference was quite good to address the uh, types or the genetic types of endometrial carcinoma. Endometrial carcinoma is a very controversial disease, very heterogeneous disease based on the clinical, histopathological, and now even on the molecular characteristics. So we have now four molecular genetic classification, the pool one, the mismatch repair genes, the P53 low uh, and high uh, copy numbers. Which one of these is uh, a subject for fertility sparing? Perhaps it is the pool or the polyendonuclease and the mismatch repair genes. So definitely, even if we go to a stage 1A, grade 1, but with high P53 copy number, that is not the candidate because that's answering secretory question early in the morning. These patients are told you do a very perfect surgery, but they come back because the disease is of the 
high grade molecular surface. And that slide explains this phenomenon. Pre-treatment workup, two are mandatory now, the MRI, <coughs> so you have to exclude any myometrial invasion, although there have been some trials with superficial myometrial invasion. And also you have to do the molecular subtype, and this should be ideally of the pool or the uh, polymerase endonuclease subtype. That has a very good prognosis, by the way. Or the mismatch repair genes, but the B53 high copy number that should not be in selected for that treatment. Now the modalities of treatment, what are the available treatments? The available treatments are high dose oral progestin. I'm gonna come back to that one because definitely this is the best or the most accepted line of treatment. The levonorgestrel enterotrine device or the Myrena IUCD has been tried on the atypical endometrial hyperplasia and some forms of early endometrial carcinoma but definitely now its place is getting down. There have been trials on the metformin, the uh, gonadotropic hormone leasing hormone agonist, the photodynamic therapy. My PhD in Manchester was about photodynamic therapy, but it does not work for this case. Uh, hysteroscopic resection, yes, there are reports on hysteroscopic and even open resection. Raj will speak about that later on. There have been limited uh, uh, case control studies for a very focal endometrial invasive carcinoma that you can remove it either by hysteroscopy or by uh, uh, open surgery or by laparoscopy and there have been pregnancies out after that. But by uh, uh, now, the best outcome comes from the combined hysteroscopic and gestogen therapy if that is available. High dose oral progestins, we have the uh, Migestrol estate, what's called Migacy. Uh, <coughs> perhaps the tablet contains 20 and 40 milligrams, so you can give four, five, six, seven, sometimes 10 tablets a day. So the average dose is about four tablets of the 40, 160, or sometimes you can give high up, up to 10 tablets, so 400 milligrams. The oral medroxyprogesterone, which is Provera, has five and 10 and 2.5. The one in Egypt is 10 milligrams, so if you're gonna go that one, perhaps you're gonna get 50 tablets a day, <laughs> which is a very big dose. Uh, we have experience with the dipomodroxyprogesterone estate, which perhaps doesn't add, because it is good for control of bleeding, but not good for fertility sparing or regression of the hyperplasia. Uh, the trials or the success rate for is around 30% for all patients, but if they respond to this regressive treatment with oral gestogen, the pregnancy rate could go up to 60%, which is good. I mean, so 30% for the whole, if you take the whole group that is exposed to the high dose progestin, and 30% for those who respond to treatment can achieve a pregnancy. Uh, of course, if you have a hysteroscopic resection of a focal lesion, and definitely I would like to say here that if you have removed a, a polyp that comes to be cancer with no background hyperplasia or carcinoma, you don't need to worry about it. Well, I've had this debate for ages, perhaps Raj is gonna comment on that one as well. But if you remove a polyp and the polyp comes malignant, you should do DNC. If the DNC does not show any hyperplasia or malignancy, perhaps this patient could be followed up safely. I perhaps you're gonna comment on that later on. Uh, as I said, the combined hysteroscopic and gestogen following or before hysteroscopy adds value and this should be attempted in the focal subtype. So whenever possible. Evaluation of response. During treatment, you should do DNC, a proper DNC uh, every three months. If you are getting regression, after three months or after six months, we don't know exactly for how long you go, but as long you are achieving regression of the malignancy or even the high grade hyperplasia, you can go further. Till a point when you intervene by assisted reproductive technology. So that decision should come with a multidisciplinary team when you work hand in hand. But you will start by the hydrogestogen, 
after three months of duty and see if it is regressing, you can counsel the patient and consult your colleagues. You can go for immediate uh, 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 exe or IVF, whatever. And once the patient is pregnant, the regression is maintained and there have been good reports following the regression. The recommendation so far is once the patient gets pregnant and delivered, you should remove the uterus. But there have been reports of a repeat pregnancy which carried on in a good way. So the fertility management uh, is an, an, an eligible patient, strongly desirous to get pregnant with early stage disease of the full subtype or mismatch repair genes, you could consider <laughs> you could consider high dose gestogen with or without hysteroscopic resection. The available evidence suggests that this modality is effective and safe. Is effective and safe in these very selected patients. This how effective it is, and overall, as I said before, is about 30%. In the patients who responded initially and there is regression proved by DNC, if you try conception rate, it can go up to 60%, which is good. <laughs> by all parameters, it's good. Taking into consideration the age of the patient, the malignant situation, and so on and so on. Once you have achieved to get a pregnant, the pregnant status itself with high progesterone level will maintain the regression state and it is advisable to remove the uterus or some patients would refuse on their own decision. So ladies and gentlemen, I used to say fertility sparing is requested highly in the early stage ovarian cancer, in the early stage cervical cancer, but based on this evidence, although there is no evidence-based recommendations, it's all trials based on experience. That's level grade, level grade, uh, sorry, grade four uh, uh, evidence based or level three recommendations. All experience coming from the literature. But fairly say it is possible in young women strongly desirous to have uh, uh, babies to give high dose gestogen with or without hysteroscopy to start fertility management. And once you achieve a pregnancy you can go and remove the uterus. I would say young woman, early stage, early grade, you can do whatever you like about this classification based on a multidisciplinary team with good fertility, good multidisciplinary, good centers of oncofertility pathway. It is safe and good hands. However, the final word, there is no evidence-based recommendation yet for this highly controversial issue. I thank you very much and sorry for the question. Thank you very much for your uh, fantastic review about this uh, topic. If I may, I will open the discussion because Please. we will have no the, the discussion uh, with, with your thoughts because you open the, the, the with many different aspects that are really interesting. Thanks to highlight that combination of the treatment of this patient is based on hysteroscopic resection and, and progesterone treatment. This is in line with the fresh recommendation from the ESGO, H3 and SG, recommending both treatment in the management of this patient. So it's, it is exactly on the same line. But there is a big gap in this topic. Yeah. It's the integration of molecular profile Aye. to define the group of patients. Why? just to focus on the best group, which is the Paul E patients. Yeah. But all the recommendations are currently based on the selection of patients on the basis on common histotypes, yeah. on grade one disease. Yeah. So but if you select the patient for Paul E mutated, morphologically, yeah. these patients are high grade disease yeah. on the morphology of their, their yeah. So there is a gap. Yeah. How we does we need to skip the conventional subtypes yeah. just to go ahead with only the molecular one, but we have no any data to do that. Fine. <laughs> or can we continue to use only the morphology and the grading system yeah. to select the patient? For me, 
this is an, um, a fantastic question yeah. that I have not personally solved. Right. Yeah. What is your opinion about it? Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Christian Morris has re <laughs> said or rephrased what we used to say. It took us three years to understand endometrial carcinoma based on morphologic and histopathologic and subtype. And when we said we understood it, then we turned back to point zero and became the molecular characterization, which will need another 10 years to understand it. <laughs> yeah. When we started to understand endometrial carcinoma because of the low <laughs> and intermediate and high risk types have probably disappeared now, who are now saying it is whole, that uh, uh, fully endometriase, or mismatch repair, or P53. And even there is a category which doesn't fit with any of the three, which they are called ankylosified or the mixed subtype. What exactly is running, we do not know. And when we say <laughs> we, mean the scientific community. Nobody knows exactly what is driven behind uh, uh, the behavior of endometrial carcinoma. And even some pathologists will go further and say it is not one disease. Endometriate is not a serous subtype, and the pole is not the P53 mutant, and definitely they are different from the mismatch repair gene. So the Kutori's <laughs> question in the morning comes back. Yeah, here's his post now. <laughs> Raj is wanting to comment. Yes, uh, but um, Philip is the most now. <laughs> syndrome, uh, okay. which is obviously is NMR. So, yeah. So, th and there is some research being done to see whether gastric banding can help reverse some of those underlying yeah. stimulations uh, to the endometrial cancer, therefore revert the malignant process. Same with treatment of the uh, PCOS. So I think, you know, uh, quite often uh, for these young women, uh, where fertility is an issue, uh, the key would be to try and identify an underlying reason, as well as the genetic profiling. Fine. As you say, I think the weight loss yeah. or the weight control yeah, is the key issue yeah, to, to improve the, yeah. the, the fertility rate. Yeah, the, yeah I agree for that one. Yeah, definitely obesity and estrogen, hyperestrogenic state does play an important role in the endometrioid subtype of the endometrioid, which yeah. is the majority, and definitely a weight-reducing maneuver by bariatric surgery or whatever, although it produces the <laughs> gut failure, as you <laughs> said, in, in a majority, <laughs> or in a minority of cases. But definitely weight reduction, even by surgery, does uh, help. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> And um, I was wondering first if you're aware of uh, any prospectively collected ser uh, theories uh, that do determine molecular classification in fertility sparing. I think this would be highly warranted. Yeah. And my, my second question is where does this come from? So you say poly, yeah. you say mismatch repair deficient. Yeah. I'm wondering about uh, the big group of NSMP, yeah. the non-specific yeah. molecular, non yeah. because yeah. they are so heterogeneous, Absolutely. this group, yeah. and, and we know f also from high-risk cases that the one that are yeah. hormone receptor positive, yeah. that they have a particularly good prognosis. Absolutely. So yeah. potentially yeah. also a subset of the right. NSMP and, and w what you said, the adipositas yeah. and, and the hormone receptors, so the, the hormonal uh, dependent. So yeah. maybe this, this would also be, how is your evaluation? Absolutely, to the point. Uh, in Mansur, I had a PhD thesis for a pathologist. I'm afraid she's not in here. And we published it in a, in a good journal. And we were quite happy to say that the patients who express estrogen and progesterone and those who are uh, have good prognosis, and those who express uh, HER2 and P53 are put prognostic factors. Amani Hassan, as you can, uh, can you know. 
was published very good, but uh, then came the Atlas classification of things and it vanished. As many as hundreds of genes have tested. Now we speak about the four, but in the four, there is one who doesn't match, as you exactly said. Still, we say the uh, polyendonuclease, the mismatch repair, the P53, high, high copy or low copy. And there is another category which is expanding, perhaps the majority of these, who is anonymous specific. <laughs> so exactly what endometrial carcinoma is about, <laughs> I didn't work with, you know, the father of pathology and he said that a lot of days in his life, I really do not understand what is endometrial carcinoma. <laughs> he was Professor yeah, Fox. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I have a comment, then a question. Yes, sir. Uh, my comment is this is similar to what is uh, done in early bladder cancer and the early esophageal and the early gastric cancer. Yeah. Is when the lesion is mucosal, yeah. you can do the maximum resection by yeah. endoscopy. True. Yeah, true. Uh, my question is uh, what is the time between follow up and you allow pregnancy? It's a, yeah, five. Second question, yeah. the, the hormones of pregnancy does not initiate Very good. Uh, carcinomatosis in the ovary or in the yeah. uterus in this condition. Thank you, sir. Uh, the, perhaps there are questions in the literature for both of these. The first one, uh, I'll take the second one first because it is easier to say. If the patient has achieved regression after three months, or after six months, he counsels the patient to go straight away for uh, IVF or ICSI, you know, what's called assisted reproductive technology. And the outcome is very good. And the follow-up, there is no progression, even there is regression. And also there is regression after the end of pregnancy for some time. The reason is during pregnancy, the progesterone or the early pregnancy hormone is increased thousand folds than in the non-pregnant state. And as we know, progesterone is the physiological antagonist of estrogen, so it keeps it in regression, and there is no documented case which recurred during pregnancy or in the immediate vicinity after pregnancy. So that's the one. When to intervene, most of literature say this is left to the center and based on the assessment of the pathology and the uh, uh, vision of those who will intervene uh, immediately after high dose progesterone. Usually they give a window. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Sorry for that. Usually they give a window for the uterus to recover from the very high progesterone dose. This window varies, but uh, uh, once the woman gets a, a period, because the endometrium has a cycle every month. And once it goes back to administration after high dose estrogen, this could be a candidate for IVF. I think I answered your question. Oh. Go. So uh, the minimum uh, period is six months? Three months if you have achieved complete regression. We can start. Uh, yes, but give it. For pregnancy after three months. After three months, if the histopathology said it is normal. Yes. If it is said it is less and uh, adenomatous than the previous one, carry on for another six, three months to six months. Yes. On the second D and C after six months, if it said no response, for stop and do surgery. Yes. If it does good response, stop for the cycle to come and then do IVF. Okay. That is the uh, flow chart. Six months. Six months without response is an indication for surgery. Raj, uh, I, I have to. Uh, I want oh to ask sorry. if you have any uh, uh, personal experience with uh, such case, uh, or anyone, or anyone here uh, has a personal experience uh, 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 with. Uh, have, uh, Murat has. I personally had a patient Rida was my uh, registrar <laughs> at that time, who gave her high dose medical progesterone state. We didn't have mega T injection. Or injection, yeah. After three months, we got good results. You know, say is there this but is not back to normal. So yes. we carried for another three months and good at six months, so they can remember they said it is gone to a real invasive endometrial carcinoma, so we stopped. 
I personally have no successful experience of a pregnancy okay. following endometriosis. Uh, well Rather, <laughs> I mean, just a comment, the same. Uh, at six months, the success rate is around 65 to 70 percent. So Extending to nine months additional seems feasible and safe, but the rates of response will not exceed 72 percent. And after nine months, it's totally experiment. And you know, we don't have much more data, very limited. Uh, and th in the opposite, in the opposite, who are giving very good response, I am sometimes facing, I have three patients, they are good responsive, we are waiting for the child, with or without child. Now they see that they can do it with hormone, they reject surgery after even having a child. This is something never discussed, but I don't know if you see, but the lady takes six months hormone therapy, and uh, then sh her fears about cancer decreases. She thinks that she yeah. can deal with this. Yeah. I have two patients that rejecting surgery uh, yeah. for five years. Every year they give biopsy, still endometrial carcinoma, but this is a different <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah, fine. Uh, I would say in one of the references from the South Korean study, there's a lady who achieved two pregnancies. You know, I just moved yeah uh, into this to read because they have described it in the details. They said this patient refused the surgery, and she got pregnancy six months after the first one, and both were okay. You know, even she refused surgery after the third, but didn't achieve a pregnancy. <laughs> but, but you are correct. <laughs> no evidence-based data. Absolutely, yeah. Maurice has said that, P sorry, Philip has said that several times. Yeah. This yeah. is all case control studies or a case series of studies. We did not have yet solid data to say because of the heterogeneity uh, of the disease. Uh, yes, about the type of hormonal therapy does affect the, 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 uh, the treatment, I mean, uh, using uh, injection or well, trial of uh, Marina does affect? Uh, the injection has dropped altogether. No series, nothing in the world now speak about the injection, levomodrexal progesterone I see. It's controlling bleeding, but has nothing to do with the regression. It's all based on the high dose oral. They have two, the, the Provera and the Megacy. You know? uh, even we have Provera in Egypt, I we can order Megacy from France or from it, it comes straight away. It comes, yeah. Mega C comes. You can now order it online, and it will it will come easy. The dose, the tablet is 40 milligrams, so you can we start with five tablets, up to 10 tablets a day. Much better than 15, 50 kind of thing. Uh, Myrina, it started with. It seems to be good with a typical liver blazer for cancer. I don't think it's good, but uh, the my seniors could add it to this table. Yes. Raj, you still have some. Yeah, just, uh, just a quick comment uh, yeah. that uh, uh, Provera, there, there is a tablet 200 milligrams Where a day. Uh, we used to use it in the UK, and I, when I write it here in, in Egypt, I write it and they bring it from uh, outside from if London. you want it. Uh, yeah, or, or, or from or the Gulf right. countries. Megas, Megas, there is a tablet that's 160 milligrams. Yeah, and I don't normally use more than 200 milligrams a day. If it's not responding to 200 milligrams, it's not going to respond. And I give them a, 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 a prognosis or, or a success rate of 50-50. I say, well, it's 50% it's success rate, not more than that. And yeah. I wait only for six months, uh, three yeah. months, and yeah. do a, a DNC. The first DNC, I always do hormone receptor status, always. Yeah. And Great. if there is uh, no uh, receptors to hormones, I refuse to complete uh, the treatment. Uh, if it is successful and they don't uh, have uh, the finances to go for IVF or assisted reproduction, I do soft inductions with, with literozole that yeah. blocks the estrogen Maybe. receptors yeah. a little bit uh, on the endometrium. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, in the UK, we used to have collaboration with our bari bariatric surgeons, actually, because we, uh, we went into that, and I left the UK before actually doing the study on that, because we also published two, um, uh, two papers, just a case series, 
on the role of apronectomy in endometrial yeah. cancer patients and how it does reduce the, uh, the recurrence rate in certain uh, cases of endometrial cancer. So by reducing obesity in such cases, you, are you expect that to, uh, to, uh, to have a good response to them as well. In the endometrial yes. tract cancer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, my, my question is really for completeness were uh, how popular is surrogacy here? And do you not think a, not a allowed place? by a religious tract per se. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and obviously. That's an easy question. Easy <laughs> and, and the option of uterine transplantation. Uh, although there is no, no, there is no religious uh, uh, prohibition for uterine transplantation if it is from mom or so, and the gametes will be from the lady and her husband, but we haven't tried the procedure yet in Egypt. <laughs> Please, uh, uh, if, 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 if I may, there is for me an additional burning point. Yeah. You mentioned the, the data from PARC. Yeah. which is the sole one to open the field yeah. to patients with myometrial infiltration, yeah. grade one, yeah. and even to patients with grade two or grade three. Yeah. Just to remind yeah. that no, we are moving to a new morphological classification Fine. with only binary, grade high grade, low grade, yeah. and the ESGO and SG recommendation yeah. ask to come back to the old pre-classification, low grade, grade one, grade go which is quite logical because I really stick to grade one disease. Yeah. In your own practice, yeah. will you open mm. the window to patients with grade two or grade three or with grade one disease and myometrial infiltration on hystroscopic resection? <laughs> I apologize uh, for this question, yeah, but that's uh, a real life. As, as I said, the good thing about this country is we get girls married by the age of 20. <laughs> by the age of 40, they have 40 children. So, <laughs> <laughs> but in, in France, it's 40 years old and there are no uh, children. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I think uh, definitely the age and young, especially physicians, is getting close to 40 now. I have been asked this question several times, but because I don't have much real experience, I refer to my colleagues in Cairo, which could uh, theoretically see more patients, and I have referred one patient to the UK, to my colleagues in the UK, and they said, please go for hysterectomy. So they, uh, they didn't, because they said, uh, by the way, that was the daughter of a professor of mine who was very keen to keep her fertility, but uh, she went to Manchester, and they said uh, the treatment is unreliable, the prognosis is unpredictable, and we don't recommend any fertility sparing surgery, and I respected them so much. <laughs> uh, about uh, about uh, monitoring of the response after the high dose progestin. Uh, progestin? Monitor yes, monitoring, yeah. monitoring response by hysteroscopy uh, or uh, DNC. Would Must be by DNC. Uh, hysteroscopy is not any visual method is not a reliable method for assessing should be by DMC even not by office DMC. oh by hysteroscopic DMC this is what you mean hysteroscopic, uh, hysteroscopic yeah. DMC yeah. that's yeah. the word yeah, yeah. Okay. absolutely because but uh, ISMO is a recommendation or uh, uh, go for uh, hysteroscopic biopsy yeah that's true yes. the gold DMC. standard for is the hysteroscopic DMC mm -hmm. you know you have to see and take a biopsy uh, uh, the blind DNC is not sufficient, and the hysteroscope alone is not sufficient. That's good. Uh, did I did my bit? I have to sit down, or because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have many questions for the others. <laughs> you, are you are right. You, you have four speakers in this session, so yeah. you, are, you, are, you, are, yeah. you will be killed at the end. But, but we have more questions. is there any additional question to the other speakers? Because uh, Question to Professor Nicole. Uh, I know that when we do, 